Hey guys, first of all, wanted to wish you a very happy New Year's. I hope 2020 is an incredible year for you. A common thing people do this time of year is to make New Year's resolutions. We attempt to implement changes in our lives in order to be that person we all want to be. You know, that potential, more successful person. And so on January 1st, we pledge to lose weight, eat healthy, save money, read more, and learn a language as well. Statistics show, however, that only 4% of people end up following through on their resolutions. So what I'd like to do in this video is give you four tips for learning a language this 2020, if that's something you'd like to accomplish. Of course, I could probably give you more than four tips, but I'd like to keep it to four just to keep it simple. This way you don't get confused this year and you can accomplish your goals. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Tip number one, clearly define your goal. Most people say something like this, this year I want to learn English. This is actually a terrible goal. I'm half kidding here. I understand the intent behind your statement. However, the goal is far too general and generic to be taken seriously. In other words, this goal will make it easy for you to give up since it's hard to measure and too long term in the distant future to help you hold yourself accountable. A better goal would be within the next month, I'd like to read my first book in English, memorize 300 words, have four conversations with a native speaker, spend 20 minutes a day listening to an English podcast. Notice how all of these goals are not result focused, but focused on the action, the decisions we make on a daily basis. It's about the process or the journey, not about the result. Secondly, all of these goals are focused on the short term, the next 30 days. Therefore, more measurable and easier to hold yourself accountable. It's hard for us to think in a year's time, but it's much easier to imagine ourselves accomplishing something in the near future. As the saying goes, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. It's about making these daily decisions over the next 30 days, then the next 30 days, taking it one day at a time. So even just 20 minutes a day for one month is over 10 hours of practice, which might seem small, but could have a serious impact on your overall level. Tip number two, organize yourself and become an owner. By organizing yourself, I mean to take an ownership stake in your learning process or your methodology. I've seen so many people shirk the responsibility of not learning a language, to not having enough time, to the horrible institute, to the ridiculously boring teacher, to a lack of financial resources. Sound familiar? But we all know what these are called. Excuses. We don't find time, we make time. If you haven't learned English, it's not because you haven't had the time, it's because you haven't made it a priority yet. A lack of time equals a lack of priorities. That person who says they're too busy just hasn't prioritized enough yet. We all know how much time we waste scrolling on our cell phones every single day. Now I'm not saying you're lying about how busy you are, or wait, maybe I am. Just kidding, all I'm saying is that anyone who makes something their priority will make the time. If you don't, then it's simply not a priority. While talking about time and priorities, know what you'll be working on specifically tomorrow and then the next day. English encompasses many facets. There's listening, speaking, reading, writing, memorizing vocabulary, learning grammar, practicing pronunciation. My recommendation would be to schedule these individual and specific tasks into your calendar rather than just putting something generic such as study English. Also, spend more time improving those aspects of the language you're actually weakest at. If you can speak pretty well but you don't understand when people talk to you, then focus most of your attention on listening comprehension over the next 30 days. Personally, after three months of living in Chile, I could speak pretty well, but I couldn't understand when people were talking to me. At that point, I needed to focus most of my attention on improving my listening. So, you need to know your individual needs and make yourself responsible for your own learning. You need to take a proactive role in deciding your methods and processes. Summing this all up, you need to take an ownership stake in your learning, and you need to get yourself organized. Now my third tip is to embrace technology. I mean seriously, this is 2020 people. Learning a language has never been more accessible or easier. With the plethora of apps, audiobooks, podcasts, ebooks, streaming music, YouTube videos, there really are no more excuses. Most resources are free 
and others are very affordable. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in 2020 to learn a new language. In particular, tech seems to be best used for memorizing new vocabulary, practicing your grammar, and improving your listening and reading skills. While talking about tech, I would be remiss to not mention one of the strongest technologies out there to help you. That is SRS or Spaced Repetition System. We have a whole video on YouTube explaining spaced repetition. So if you'd like to check that out, there's a link in the description below. But the general idea is this system is based on science and it's based on the brain and your memory. Traditionally, we would rely on rote memorization to memorize, for example, 20 new vocabulary words. You may have written down a list in your notebook, 20 new words, and before the day of a test, you would try to memorize those words in order. I used to have entire notebooks full of vocabulary words when I was learning Spanish. However, it turns out this is not the most efficient or effective way to memorize new knowledge. With an SRS system, you only focus or study on the words that are the most difficult for you on a specific day. So instead of memorizing all these 20 words in a list, what you would do is only focus on the three, four, or five words that you haven't been able to memorize in previous sessions. In other words, you're only focusing on the words that are difficult for you. You could implement your own SRS system using flashcards, or you could use an application that you can download on your cell phone, such as Anki or Memrise. We made a video specifically on how to use Anki, so check the description below. But SRS is an extremely powerful tool that you need to be using in 2020. And my fourth and maybe most important tip is to attack your fear of speaking. Over the past few years, I've greatly improved my Portuguese. And even as someone who has worked in the industry of language learning for over 10 years, I still made this same mistake. That is, I did everything else when I was studying Portuguese except confront my fear of speaking Portuguese. It's really easy to hide behind technology, books, podcasts, lists of vocabulary, however, the most important thing you can do is to start speaking from the first day. Speaking is a beast of its own. You could study a language for two years, have mastered the grammar or the theory of the language, and still not be able to hold a conversation if you haven't been specifically practicing that skill. And let's be honest, most people learn a language because they imagine themselves in a foreign country impressing everyone around them, wrapping off phrases just like a native speaker. Fewer people learn a language just to be able to read or understand theoretical literature. You should not wait to first learn the grammar, then memorize all the vocabulary before having your first conversation. You need to start speaking from day one. Like any other skill, you need to learn and do. However, most people make the mistake of learning, but not doing. That's why we like to say you don't just learn a language, you use it. You could practice your speaking by finding a language group, by traveling, or for example, calling Dynamic English and asking for a native teacher to give you private lessons, whether in your house, office, or online. Individual classes are the best because all of the speaking time is for you, and the teacher can correct all your mistakes in real time and help you out when you don't know how to express yourself. If you're in a group, of course you can learn grammar. However, you're sharing your practice time. You might be with two, four, six, eight, even 10 people in a class. And so your speaking practice is actually just a percentage of the class time. So even though private classes are more expensive, if you use that time well, and you use it to practice speaking instead of studying the language in that time, these classes will be much more valuable than taking a group class. So to sum things up, just remember to start speaking from the first day and don't wait until you master everything else. Speaking is a skill of its own and you need to start practicing immediately. Just as a child learns by interacting with the language instead of studying it, you need that interaction with a speaking partner. So don't wait and start speaking now. So there you have it. Those are my four tips for learning a new language in 2020. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We release a new video every week. Until next video, good luck learning your new language and Feliz Año Nuevo.